Yamaha used its precision blend oil system on many of its two-stroke models from the three, four, to six-cylinder engines, and I'm going to explain to you how it works, starting with the three-cylinder because it's the easiest. Now, there's basically two different types of systems here. They both are going to use an engine oil tank with a sensor in it, but one is also going to use a remote oil tank that is mounted inside the boat, which also has a sensor in it as well. But let's start with the three-cylinder, which uses just an oil tank on the engine with the sensor. All of the sensors are going to have very similar looking sensors. They're all going to have a top that's kind of like this, which is also going to have a shaft that comes down as well as a float that floats up and down on the sensor. Now this float is going to have three different levels to it. It's going to have a top, a middle, and then a third section, which leaves about a third of the tank left. That third is important to remember because that is what is going to be used as far as the warning system. Now on the three cylinder engine, this sensor is only for the warning system. It does no other function than to relay information to the gauge and to the warning system, which will have an audible alarm, a visual alarm, as well as put the engine in RPM reduction if the oil level gets too low. It has three different wires on this sensor. So this is going to have a green wire that comes off of it. And it's going to have a green wire with a red stripe come off of it. And it is also going to have a black wire. The black is going to be a ground. So when the oil tank is full, the green wire is going to be grounded. That's going to tell the gauge to leave a green light or all the bars to be on to let you know that the oil tank is full. Now, when it gets to halfway, that green loses its ground. When it loses the ground, that turns on the yellow light, and that lets you know that your oil tank is halfway full. Now, when it gets down to one third and has about a third of a quart left, I believe is how much oil is left in the tank, that one third then grounds our green red, which is going to turn on a red light on the gauge. It's going to sound the buzzer, and it is also going to put the engine into an RPM reduction or basically a slow mode or, you know, engine protection mode. So when the oil tank is full, this green wire is going to be grounded, and that's going to let the gauge know that you're going to have a green light or all the bars letting you know that the oil tank is full. Now, when this float goes down to the half mark, it's going to give you a yellow light on the dash or on the gauge, letting you know that there is half of the tank empty and it's going to have no ground on this green wire. Then when you get down to a third, this float comes down to a third, you're going to have about a third of a quart left in the tank and it's going to have a ground on the green red wire, which is going to turn on a red light with an audible buzzer and it's going to put you into an RPM reduction or a slow or guardian or an engine protection mode. So like we said, on the three cylinder, the engine oil tank and the sensor in the engine oil tank all has to do with your gauge and with the warning system as far as safety and the control of the engine goes. It doesn't turn on any oil pumps or anything like that. Now for the gauges, depending on what year gauge you have, some are going to have three lines. Some are going to have like a colored section. It's going to have a red, yellow, and a green. The green or the three bars is going to tell you that the engine oil tank is full and it is over one third quart in the oil tank. Now, if you get a yellow light or two bars or one bar flashing, that's going to tell you that there is one third quart of oil left in the oil tank. And then if you get a red light or you get one bar, that means that there is less than one third oil left in the tank. This is all for the three cylinder. Now let's talk about the four and the six, which is going to be the same system, but the wire colors on the sensor are going to change based on the four cylinder or the six cylinder, as well as what they do. So on our V4, we're gonna have the constant ground. We're going to have our white wire then we're going to have a brown wire and we are going to have a red wire. On the V6, this white wire is now going to be blue white. Our brown wire is now going to be blue green and our red wire is now going to be blue red. All of these wires are going to function the exact same. So I'm just putting this one out there right now so that way you can see the V4 and the V6. These are the colors that are going to be for the V6 but they're going to do the exact same thing as the V4. 
before. So now let me tell you exactly how each one of these wires functions and what exactly it does. So we're always going to have the constant ground on the sensor. Whenever the oil tank is full, the white wire is going to be grounded. Whenever the sensor is at the halfway point, the brown wire is going to be grounded. And when the engine gets to one third or the engine oil tank gets to one third, the red wire is then going to be grounded. Now what each one of these does is a different story because now we have to involve a pump into the situation. So at the full position, whenever the float gets all the way to the top, that tells the pump to turn off, which is going to unground or give you an open loop on the blue wire, which feeds the oil transfer pump. So at halfway full, that is when the brown wire is going to get grounded, which is going to turn the pump on, which is going to supply a ground to the blue wire, basically. And whenever the float gets all the way down to the third position, it's going to turn on the red light on the gauge, it's going to sound the buzzer, it's going to put you into an RPM reduction, and the blue wire is still going to get a ground to it because it's trying to turn the transfer pump on in order to fill the engine oil tank up with oil. Now that is all the positions of this three position switch here. So you've got the float, when it gets to full, it turns the pump off. When it gets to half, it turns the pump on by grounding the blue wire, but it doesn't do anything else. It's supposed to just fill back up and then turn the pump off. Now, if it gets below the half and gets all the way down to the third, it's going to still have that blue wire grounded, but it's gonna give you all these warning signs here as well and turn on your red light, your buzzer, RPM reduction, and all that kind of good stuff. So that's gonna be the main difference between the three cylinder engines and the four and six cylinder engines, because you now have that remote oil tank and on the four cylinder and the six cylinder we've added a fourth wire onto the sensor which is now controlling a transfer pump that is found on the remote oil tank that is in the bilge or in the boat somewhere which that sensor uses the CDI unit or the computer on the engine to tell that pump to turn on or turn off using the grounds of those wires. Now there is also going to be a sensor inside that remote oil tank, which also does some other stuff, mainly all warning horn systems and lights and stuff like that. So let's talk about that sensor that's in there. Now this sensor is only going to have two wires on it. One is going to be our black, which is going to be our constant ground. And then we're also going to have a black wire, but it's going to have a red stripe to it. Now this wire here is going to be have a full position, which is going to be grounded, and a third position, which is going to be ungrounded. So when the float is up here at the top position, that is going to show full, which is going to give you a green light at the dash or on the gauge. And when it gets down to one third, it's gonna give you a yellow light. Now this is also where it gets kind of funky because if there is no ground, or you're at a third and there's no ground on our black and red, this will also tell the CDI to not transfer oil, which means you're not gonna get a ground on our blue wire, which we're gonna talk about, but this means no oil transfer. So if you don't have a ground on your black or on your black or your black and red, then you're not going to transfer oil and you're going to have that yellow light on the gauge. But this leads us over to talking about the transfer pump, which has a blue and a brown wire on it, but it is also related to our black and our red wire because on the top of the harness where the sensor from the remote oil tank connects to the harness that goes to the engine, there's four wires there. There's the black, the black and the red, but then there's also a brown and a blue wire. Now those blue, brown and blue wires go down to the pump, but the black and red and the black go back to the CDI unit or the computer that is on the engine. And if that engine, that CDI unit, that computer doesn't see the ground on our black and our red wire, then it's not going to supply the ground, which is the blue wire to the transfer pump. Our brown is going to be the constant 12 volt going to the pump. 
So whenever you have the key switch on, there's basically 12 volts on this line that is going down to our transfer pump. And then the blue wire is our grounding wire, which is controlled from the CDI from the computer that is on the engine. Let me show you how this looks. So our engine CDI computer has the black ground and the black red for another ground going to the tank sensor. And then based on what the tank sensor does, it then tells the CDI what's going on. Now from that, you also have this brown wire, which is positive 12 volts key on power. So there's always constant 12 volt power for the transfer pump on that brown wire. Now on our blue wire, that is where things change because on this right here, you're going to have ground for the transfer pump. When our oil tank is full, this is controlled from the engine tank sensor. And then when we are at a third, you have no ground on black red, which means no oil transfer. Our blue and our brown are all for the transfer pump and this is what it basically does. So it's not uncommon to have a problem with any one of these sensors, but now you kind of understand how they interact with each other. That transfer pump a lot of times will lock up. There is also a filter that is on there. So if that filter gets clogged, that transfer, that transfer pump might turn on, but it won't be able to push any oil through the clogged filter to get to the engine. And the sensor on the engine oil tank is going to let let you know whether you or not you have oil, you're getting oil, whether that is going up and down, but you can have a problem with any one of these items. It's also important to note that you have the engine harness as well as the harness that goes from the engine to the oil tank. Uh, there is a lot of times, probably 50% of the time, where that harness gets bad, whether that be a bad ground, a bad black and red wire, a bad blue wire, a, bla a bad brown wire, uh, any one of those. But at least now you know what each one of those wires do. This way you should at least understand the system and be able to diagnose your problem if you have an issue with the precision blend system of Yamaha for their two-stroke engines.